All right, so in this video we cover limits involving trigonometric functions and the squeeze theorem. All right, so on the past videos I didn't include any kinds of exercises involving trigonometric functions, so in this case we're going to cover a few. So as we did in the previous examples, every time we have a limit problem, well, uh, the substitution rule, uh, it's the first thing you want to try. Hopefully you get a, a nice number and that's your limit, but otherwise it may be important to do some algebraic manipulations. Well, in this case, for trigonometric functions, we may need to use trigonometric identities. Let's have a couple of a look at a couple of examples of for letter A. We have the limit of cosine over sine x minus 3 as x approaches 0. So let's see what let's see what we can do in this case. So um, let's plug in the value for x and recall that when we plug in the value we no longer write the limit symbol. So in this case simply go about cosine of 0 divided by sine 0. minus 3, where in this case cosine of 0 equals to 1 and sine of 0 equals to 0 minus 3 and in this case we get 1 over negative 3 which is really negative 1 third as a final answer. Alright, so in this case we didn't need to do any algebraic manipulations, in other words any uh, trigonometric identities using, okay? Let's see what happens at for in this case for letter B. So we have the limit of tangent theta as um, theta approaches pi over 2. Well, so let's see. So number one, let's plug in the values so we can see what we're going to get. So in, on the one hand, so we have tangent, tangent pi over 2. But well, to have an idea of what tangent pi over 2 is, it would be a good idea to rewrite this as a quotient of sine pi over 2 over cosine pi over 2. From, the, from trigonometry, from the values of the trigonometric functions, rather, we know sine pi over 2 equals to 1 and cosine pi over 2 is uh, 0. And well, what's this? What's this form? So you might recall from the other forms that we discussed in previous videos that this is the C over 0 form. All right, this is the C over 0 form. And in this case, well, so algebraic manipulations are not going to work here, so we might need to take a graphing approach. So how about we look at the graph of the tangent function? Well, so we have the graph of the tangent function. Let me just do a very rough sketch. Well, so the tangent function, the tangent function looks like this. And notice in this case, we have vertical asymptotes. And these vertical asymptotes have happen to occur on the one hand, well, let me name only one of them or a couple of them. Negative pi over 2 is one of the asymptotes and this one right here is pi over 2. All right. So in this case, well, so we want to find the limit as, a, as theta approaches pi over 2, actually, the plain vanilla pi over 2, not pi over 2 from the left, nor pi over 2 from the right. And well, in this case, whenever we have that situation, if we look at the graph, well, we need to uh, look at a couple, uh, two separate cases. Well, let's look at those two cases. So on the one hand, uh, so what do we have? We need to look at the limit of tangent theta as theta approaches pi over 2 from the left and well in this case when we approach from the left see what we're going to get so uh, let's let's use a highlighter to so when we approach in this direction notice in this case the tendency is to positive infinity all right However, on the other hand, so we will need to 
now look at the limit of tangent theta as theta approaches pi over 2 from the right and in this case well if we look at that limit so notice what happens when we approach from the right so this function is going in this case to negative infinity all right so because in this case the limit from either side goes to different direction then we can conclude in the end that the original limit limit tangent theta as theta approaches pi over 2 it's DNE &E. you need to be very careful here is uh, by the way because for whatever reason some textbooks some uh, some resources uh, would tell you undefined just be let, let's be clear that the term undefined again uh is for is used for function is to determine whether a function is defined or not defined at a given value as for limits limits on the other hand they do exist or do not exist so try not to mix up that vocabulary however uh some systems might might give you as one of the options uh non-defined so let me let me write that as a note so sometimes undefined all right all right let's keep going with limits at infinity so let's see so we have a couple of special limits that we will use along the way in calculus so uh, if we plug in this uh, limit sine x over x uh, as x approaches zero well for now we cannot we don't have tools yet to determine this limit so in this case we're just going to use these results as they come up and later when we cover the L Hopital's rule uh, we will be able to prove this limit to so find the values of these limits rather in a, in a different way all right so so let's see let's evaluate each limit okay so we have limit of sine 5x over 7x as x approaches zero so one thing to keep in mind uh, when it comes to evaluating these limits is that well for the first limit this x notice coincides with this x so for example in order to compute the limit that it's equal to 1 uh, these two have to be the same for example uh, let's see if I have sine 5x over 5x well the limit is 1 or if I have sine 100x over x there has to be also a 100x in order for the limit to be equal to 1 if we compare this with the uh, with the examples that we have well uh, notice that on the one hand we have a 5x and over here we have a 7x these are not the same we need to make sure that they are both the same as the one inside of the trigonometric function in this case the 5x all right so so let's see what we're going to do so number one i'm going to write down that seven in the denominator outside of the limit as one seventh limit uh, of sine 5x over x all right so again we need to make sure that these two are the same unfortunately they are not yet the same can we make that happen of course we can make it happen by multiplying both numerator and denominator by five so this five in the numerator what i'm going to do i will multiply it outside of the limit and this five i'm going to make it multiply the x over here all right so uh let's keep going computing this limit so that's going to be 5 over 7 limit uh, x approaches 0 sine x over sine 5x over 5x and well this will be 5 sevenths 
by the limit rule right here this limit will be equal to 1 which is 5 7 final answer all right so let letter b for this set of exercises well that's going to make a very clever use of the second special limit right here as you will see in a couple of minutes all right so um So let's see. Secant x minus 1. Well, first thing you want to try here is um, substi the substitution rule. Hopefully it works. Well, but still, let's see. Let's try. So what do we have? Mm. So secant 0 minus 1 over zero well see the zero in the denominator all right let's have a look at the secant of zero secant of zero is the same as saying one over cosine zero minus one over zero equals a cosine of zero which is one one over one is one and this is a one minus one which equals zero over zero which is good this means that we can do algebra in this ex in this limit expression and eventually compute it all right this is notice this is not the c over zero this is the zero over zero the on the term the indeterminate form which means we can do manipulation so in particular for manipulations well uh let's see b okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to rewrite this secant x as uh, 1 over cosine x by trigonometric identities minus 1 all right and then the whole thing divided by x okay so this gun this, this just gave rise to a complex fraction okay a complex fraction recall that that's a fraction that contains fractions inside of it so Let's see. So let's find a global LCD to clear up the denominators. And well, how do we get that LCD? Well, number one, let's think of the following terms. So this is basically an x over one. This is an a one over one. And let's multiply both numerator and denominator by cosine x, cosine x. So, okay, distributing, let's distribute. Cosine times one over cosine, that's actually going to cancel the cosines. And one over one, which is one times cosine, that's gonna give us a cosine in the numerator. Okay, so let's go back to limit notation. So that's a limit uh, of one minus cosine x divided by in the denominator okay so all we're going to do is multiply across cosine times x which is simply x cosine x there's really nothing really really interesting in there so that's x cosine x as x approaches zero all right so notice something so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to rewrite this one minus cosine x divided by x cosine x in the following way so I'm going to do this limit, x approaches 0, uh, that's a 1 over cosine x times 1 minus cosine x over x. All right, and well, once we, in this case, I'm going to use the properties of limits to... Uh, so we can use this special limit in a, in a more visual way, you'll see. So, the limit of this product of two expressions is the same as the product of the two limits. So, limit x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine times limit of 1 minus cosine x over x as x approaches 0. Okay, the second limit right here, this one, is one of those special limits that we discussed a couple of minutes ago. This one is going to go to, actually, I believe this is, yeah, this is a zero. All right, this is zero, and in the, on the other case, we're going to have 
limit okay so that's going to be one over cosine of zero times the zero that we just got here which is one over one times zero simply zero and that's our final answer all right Okay, a very important result in calculus, uh, it, it's used when it comes to finding limits that we cannot otherwise um, we cannot able to otherwise evaluate using the algebraic techniques, you know, like or other trigonometric identities for, and in this case we use something called the squeeze theorem. All right, so the squeeze theorem, also known, so there's another name depending on where you read these resources. So you could read about the squeeze theorem online or on other videos on YouTube or etc. on other textbooks. They sometimes refer to the squeeze theorem as the sandwich. As the sandwich theorem. And well, the, the picture here is that, for example, you want to you have the following okay let's do this Cartesian plane and let me highlight this couple of functions so this will be a pink function right here a green function right here and a purple no let me this different color yellow and a yellow function so if we want to find the limit of the green function by squeezing it using the pink and the yellow functions so for example let's say we have let's say we have the graph uh, any graph for the green graph I'm just gonna draw anything generic typically something like this you know something just very generic and then notice f of x which is the pink one is a function below the green function let me just do like a parabola to make it simple to make it the simplest case and for the yellow functions for the yellow function right here that one notice is greater than the green function so let me do it above all right so do you see the squeeze in here do you see like the sandwich so what we're going to do is evaluate uh, a hard limit so this is a hard one to come to evaluate while h and f they're both easy they're both easy to compute all right the thing is that when whenever we have the following conclusion that because see see how this the the yellow function and the pink function actually intersect at one, at the same point as g of x so the thing is that if the limit for f and h are l then well by squeeze theorem or by sandwich the limit of g has to be also the same you'll see the argument how are we going to uh, how are we going to come up with this idea? And well, the, these problems typically are related to evaluating uh, functions that contain most of the times trigonometric functions. So we're going to most in most of the time, most of the time, sine and cosine. So number one, uh, number one thing to recall is that the functions sine and cosine have a are bounded by are bounded between negative one and one all right so that means that we can rewrite these trigonometric functions as compound and inequalities that go from negative one and one for sine and likewise for cosine negative one to one right so those are the ranges for sine and in this case notice I'm not using just f of x equals sine x and f of x equals cosine x uh, because that x that angle can be anything you know like sine of 1 over x sine of 1 over the cube root of x to the 4 plus 7x or sine of e to the x you know anything composite that's what I'm trying to say that's what I want to say here 
And well, here for the setup part, uh, the first thing that we do is rewrite the trigonometric function uh, in the form on, of an inequality based on its range. And in this case, it goes from negative one to one. All right. So, and then from here, um, let's see. And, and then from there, we need to manipulate the three sides of the compound of inequality in a way that the middle side looks like the expression on the original limit that we want to evaluate. And then we are going to take by denoting the limit as well on the three sides. And then the last part is to squeeze. And you'll see the argument that we're going to come up with. But the best way to do this is by looking at a couple of examples. So what do we have? Uh, use the squeeze theorem to prove each limit. So we're giving a limit, limit x approaches 0 for x cubed cosine over cosine of 5 over x equals to 0. So if we try replacement theorem, that's not going to work because, well, we would get 0, we would get 0 cubed cosine of 5 over 0. But what's 5 over 0? I mean, we don't know what 5 over 0 is, so we need to do something else. And that's the squeeze theorem in this case. All right, I know this limit is ugly looking, and but focus only on the trigonometric function. So let's start by writing cosine 5 over x. That's bounded between negative 1 and 1. All right, so this is what we're going to do. Our goal is to do all the break, man the algebraic manipulations that we need in order to turn this expression and make it look like the limit that we want to compute. And in this case, what is it that we need? What we need in this case is to multiply the three sides of the compound inequality, the compound inequality by x cubed. All right, multiplying the three sides, we get negative x cubed less than or equal x cubed cosine 5 over x less than or equal x cubed all right so we we almost reached our goal now we're going to take the limit on the three sides and in, in in this case notation is very very important so we need the limit of negative x cubed x approaches zero less than or equal limit x approaches zero x cubed cosine five over x and limit x cubed x approaches zero so now of course again well we went back to the original limit right so is this was was all this work really worthless? I mean, we're getting back to the original, to the original limit. No. So this is where we're gonna do the squeeze. So what we're gonna do here is compute. Recall again. Recall that this one. This is hard, but these two are easy. All right. So. We're going, to com we're going to compute the hard limit by squeezing via the easy limit. Okay, what's the limit of negative x cubed? So what are we gonna have? Zero, negative zero cubed, that's, of course, zero. So zero less than or equal limit x approaches infinity. Oh, no, not infinity, zero. x cubed cosine five over x less than or equal the limit of x cubed as x approaches zero that's zero cubed which is zero so here is the squeezing part so this quantity right here any quantity including this ugly looking quantity that is greater than or equal to zero and also less than or equal to zero this means that limit x cubed cosine 5 over x, x approaches 0 equals to 0. And this is how we prove the given limit using the squeeze theorem. All right, let's look at another more elaborate, um, another more elaborate 
mm, exercise right here all right so let's see what we get for this one all right so again yes this one looks ugly let's um let's start with the trigonometric function so that is sine pi over x and well this is bounded between negative one and one inclusive okay so in this case notice how uh how the li how the limit that we want to compute looks like well so we want to make sure that the middle side of the inequality looks like our limit and in this case as opposed to the previous example all we needed is to multiply the three sides of the inequality by x cubed so in this case uh, we're gonna we're going to not multiply by anything actually the first thing that we see there is an exponential base e and on the other hand there is a, a radical uh, square root of x needed so what we're going to do first here is to number one multiply or actually exponentiate not multiply but rather exponentiate the three sides of the inequality on the base e okay so all right let's simplify this okay e to the negative one on the left hand side of the inequality that's the same as saying one over e less than or equal uh, e to the sine of pi over x less than or equal e all right and then the last thing that we do is to multiply both sides by the square root of x so let's go ahead and do that actually i'm notice how i'm going i'm color coding this so you can see which operation i'm doing first and which operation i'm doing afterwards all right multiply by square root of x okay let's distribute this and that's going to give us 1 over e square root of x less than or equal square root of x e to the sine pi over x less than or equal and be careful here with notation because this e is not the base of an exponential this e is only a numerical coefficient for the radical function right here all right so here now it's time to see the following now it's time to compare both limits do you see how this oops nope i didn't mean this all right did you see how this quantity right here is the same as this quantity right here all right so we may now take the limit on the three sides of the inequality so limit one over e square root of x x approaches zero less than or equal limit square root of x e to the sine of pi over x less than or equal limit e times root of x not e to the root of x be careful on the three sides x approaches zero x approaches zero all right so the limit on the left hand side of the inequality is zero the limit in the middle will leave it alone that's the one that we are going to calculate using the squeeze theorem and again same argument something that is greater than or equal to zero and also less than or equal to zero must be equal to zero so this means this proves that limit x approaches zero of root of x e to the sine of pi over x equals to zero all right so this uh this concludes this video some limit exercises involving trigonometric functions and the squeeze theorem.